Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Wake Up With Joy. Today we will do March the 13th reading. Let's start with prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we just thank you. God, we worship you. God, we adore you. God, we give your name praise. We give your name glory and honor. For all that you're worthy and deserving of, God, we're worthy to be praised and adored. Today we commit ourselves to you. We declare that we are yours today and forever. That whatever you will for us, we accept cheerfully and obediently. Teach us your wisdom, discretion, and sound judgment for everything that we think, say, and do today. Help us to walk in the light of your word and give no place to darkness at all. Help us to be a good steward of our time and other gifts and calling upon our lives that we may be a blessing to all families and nations of the earth. Help us to win souls and make disciples and expand your kingdom today. Help us to stay strong in faith, giving glory to God. Help us stay truly persuaded that you will perform what you have promised. Help us to manifest the eternal life that dwells within us. Help us to stay totally alive to God and dead to sin. As Jesus is, help us to be his ambassador in this world. His spirit, his mind, his body, his faith, his healing, his miracles, his deliverance, and his reconciliation. Help us let your righteousness reign unto eternal life. Help us to always love, always forgive, and always bless. Help us to be perfect as our Father in heaven is perfect. Help us to always do those things that please you. Help us to finish your work in the earth. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we're going to go ahead and start Joshua, the 13th chapter, is where we'll begin reading. And it says, when Joshua was, was old and well advanced in years, the Lord said to him, you're very old and there are still very large areas of land to be taken over. This is the land that remains. All the regions of the Philistines and Jeshurites from the Shehar River on the east of Egypt to the territory of Ekron on the north. All of it counted as Canaanite, the territory of the five Philistine rulers in Gaza, Ashdod, Ashkelon, Gath, and Ekron. That of the Avites from the south, all the land of the Canaanites from Ara of the Sidonians, as far as Aphek, the region of the Amorites, the area of the Gebelites, and all Lebanon to the east, from Baal Gad below, Mount Hermon to Lebo, Hamath. As for all the inhabitants of the mountain regions from Lebanon to Misrephah, Maine, that is, all the Sidonians, I myself will drive them out before the Israelites. Be sure to allocate this land to Israel for an inheritance as I have instructed you, divided as an inheritance among the nine tribes and half of the tribe of Manasseh. The other half of Manasseh, the Reubenites and the Gadites, had received the inheritance that Moses had given them east of the Jordan, as he, the servant of the Lord, has, had assigned it to them. It extended from Aurora on the rim of the Arnon Gorge and from the town in the middle of the gorge and included the whole plateau of Mediba, as far as Deban, and all the towns of Sihon, king of the Amorites, who ruled in Heshbon, out to the border of the Ammonites, who ruled in Heshbon, out to the border of the Ammonites. Ammonites. It also included Gilead, the territory of the people of Jeshur, and Maka, all of Mount Hermon, and all Bashan, as far as Selica. This is the whole kingdom of Og and Bashan, who had reigned in Ashtaroth and Edrai, and had survived as one of the last little Raphites. Moses had defeated them and taken over their land, but the tribe to Levite he gave no inheritance, since the offerings made by fire to the Lord, the God of Israel, are their inheritance as he promised them. This is what Moses had given to the tribe of Reuben, clan by clan, the territory from Aurora on the rim of the Arnon Gorge, and from the town in the middle of the gorge, and the whole plateau past Mediba to Heshbon, and all its towns on the plateau, including Debon, Bamath, Baal, Beth, Baal, Mion, Jahaz, Kidamoth, Mapha, Kiriathim, Sibna, Zerath, Shahar on the valley of on the on the hill in the valley, Beth Peor, the slopes of Pisgah, and Beth Jeshima, all the towns on the plateau, and the entire realm of Sihon, king of the Amorites, who ruled at Heshbon. Moses had defeated him in the Midianite chiefs, Evi, Rakim, Zua, Hur, and Reba, princes allied with Sihon, who lived in that country. In addition to those slain in battle, the Israelites had to put the sword Balaam, son of Beor, who practiced divination. The border of the Reubenites was the bank of the Jordan. These towns and their clans were the inheritance of the Reubenites, clan by clan. This is what Moses had given to the tribe of Gad, clan by clan. The territory of Jazer, all the towns of Gilead, and half the Ammonite country, 
as far as Aurora, near Reba, and from Heshbon to Ramoth, Mizpah, and Betanim, and from Mahanam to the territory of Debir in the valley, Beth Haram, Beth Nimrah, Sukkoth, and Zaphon with the rest of the realm of Sihon, king of Heshbon, the east side of the Jordan, the territory up to the end of the Sea of Kinnereth. These towns and their villages were the inheritance of the Gadites, clan by clan. This is what Moses had given to the half-tribe of Manasseh, that is, to half the family of the descendants of Manasseh, clan by clan. The territory extending from Mahanam and including all of Bashan, the entire realm of Og, king of Bashan, all the settlements of Jair and Bashan, 60 towns, half of Gilead, Ashtoreth, and Edra, the royal cities of Og and Bashan. This is what the descendants of Machir, son of Manasseh, for for half of the sons of Machir, clan by clan. This is the inheritance Moses had given when he was in the plains of Moab, across the Jordan, east of Jericho. But to the tribe of Levi, Moses had given no inheritance. The Lord, the God of Israel, is their inheritance as he promised them. Now we're in Joshua, the 14th chapter. Now these are the areas the Israelites received as an inheritance in the land of Canaan. When Eleazar the priest, Joshua son of Nun, and the heads of tribal clans of Israel allotted to them. Their inheritance were assigned by lot to the nine and a half tribes as the Lord had commanded through Moses. Moses had granted the two and a half tribes their inheritance east of the Jordan, but had not granted the Levites an inheritance among the rest. For the sons of Joseph had become two tribes, Manasseh and Ephraim. The Levites received no share of the land, but only towns to live in, with pasture lands for their flocks and herds. So the Israelites divided the land, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Now the men of Judah approached Joshua at Gilgal, and Caleb son of Jephunneh, the Kenzanite, said to him, You know what the Lord said to Moses, the man of God at Kadesh Barnea, about you and me? I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to explore the land. And I brought him back a report according to my convictions. But my brothers who went up with me made the hearts of the people melt with fear. I, however, followed the Lord with my, the Lord my God wholeheartedly. So on that day, Moses swore to me, the land on which your feet have walked will be your inheritance and that of your children forever, because you have followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. Now then, just as the Lord promised, he has kept me alive for 45 years since the time he said this to Moses, while Israel moved about in the desert. So here I am today, 85 years old. I am still as strong today as the day Moses sent me out. I'm just as vigorous to go out to battle now as I was then. Now give me this hill country that the Lord promised me that day. You, you yourself heard that the Anakites were there and their cities were large and fortified. But the Lord helping me, I will draw them out, just as he said. Then Joshua blessed Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and gave him Hebron as his inheritance. So Hebron, was, so Hebron has belonged to Caleb, son of Jephunneh, the Kenzanite, ever since, because he followed the Lord, the God of Israel, wholeheartedly. Hebron used to be called Kiriath Arba after Arba, who was the greatest man among the Anakites. This is Joshua, the 15th chapter. The allotment for the tribe of Judah, clan by clan, extended down to the territory of Eden, to the desert of Zin in the extreme south. The southern boundary started from the bay at the southern end of the Salt Sea, crossed south of Scorpion Pass, continued on to Zin, and went over to the south of Kadesh Barnea. Then it ran past Hezron, up to Adar, and curved around to Karka, it then passed along to Asman and joined the Wadi of Egypt, ending at the sea. This is their southern boundary. The eastern boundary is the Salt Sea, as far as the mouth of Jordan. The northern boundary started from the Bay of the Sea at the mouth of the Jordan, went up to Beth Hogla, and continued north of Beth Arba, to the stone of Bohan, son of Reuben. The boundary then went up to Debir, from the valley of Achor and turned north to Gilgal, which faces the pass of Adaman, south of the gorge. It continued along to the waters of En Shemesh and came out to En Rogel. Then it ran up to the valley of Ben Hinnon, along the southern slope of the Jebusite city, that is Jerusalem, 
From there it climbed to the top of the hill, west of the Hinnom Valley, at the northern end of the Valley of Rephan. From the hilltop, the boundary headed toward the spring of the waters of Nephtoah, came out at the towns of Mount Ephraim, and went down toward Bala, that is kiriath Jerem. Then it curved westward from Bala to Mount Seir, ran along the northern slope of Mount Jerem, that is Kisalon, continued down to Beth Shemesh, and crossed to Timnah. It went to the northern slope of Ekon, turned toward Shikaron, passed along to Mount Bala, and reached Jebneel. The boundary ended at the sea. The western boundary is the coastline of the Great Sea. These are the boundaries around the people of Judah by their clans. This is the inheritance of the tribe of Judah, clan by clan. The southernmost towns of the tribe of Judah in the Negev toward the boundary of Edom were Kabziel, Eder, Jagur, Kina, Dimna, Dimona, Ada, Kidesh, Hazar, Ithnan, Ziph, Telem, Bilaf, Hazar, Hadata, Kiriath, Hezron, that is Hazor, Amon, Shema, Molada, Hazar, Gadda, Heshman, Beth, Pilet, Hazar, Shual, Beersheba, Biziothia, Bela, Ain, Ezim, El Tolad, Kisel, Horma, Ziklag, Madmana, Sansana, Lebeoth, Shilhim, Ain, and Remnan, a total of 29 towns and their villages. In the western foothills, Eshteol, Zora, Ashna, Zenoa, An Ganim, Tapua, Ina, Jarma, Adulam, Soka, Ezka, Sharaim, Eritheum, and Gedera, or Gedorathaim, 14 towns in their villages. Zenan, Hadash, Migdal Gad, Dalian, Mizpah, Jakdil, Lashish, Bozkath, Eglon, Kaban, Lahmas, Kitlish, Jidara, Beth Dagon, Nema, and Mekeda, 16 towns and their villages. Libna, Ether, Ashen, Ipta, Ashna, Nizi, Kila, Atzi, and Mersha, 9 towns and their villages. Ekron, with its surrounding settlements and villages west of Ekron, all that were in the vicinity of Ashdod, together with their villages. Ashdod, its surrounding settlements and villages, and Gaza, its settlements and villages, as far as the Wadi of Egypt and the coastline of the Great Sea. In the hill country, Shamir Jatir, Soka, Dana, Kiria, Sana, that is Debir, Enab, Eshtara, Enim, Goshim, Holom, and Gila, 11 towns and their villages. Arab, Duma, Eshan, Janim, Beth Tapua, Afka, Humata, Kiriath Arba, that is Hebron, and Zior, nine towns and their villages. Mayom, Carmel, Zip, Jetta, Jezreel, Jakdim, Zenoa, Kaim, Gibeah, and Timna, ten towns and their villages. Halhu, Beth Zur, Gidor, Meira, Beth Enath, and El Tikan, six towns and their villages. Kiriath Baal, that is Kiriath, Jarin, and Rabbah, two towns and their villages. In the desert, Beth Arba, Midim, Sikakath, Nibshan, the city of Salt, and Angedi six towns and their villages. Joshua, the 16th chapter. The allotment for Joseph began at the Jordan of Jericho, east of the waters of Jericho, and went up from there through the desert into the hill country of Bethel. It went on from Bethel, that is Luz, crossed over to the territory of the Archites in Atara, descended westward to the territory of the Japhletites, as far as the region of Lower Beth Horon, and on to Gezer, ending at the sea. 
So Manasseh and Ephraim, the descendants of Joseph, received their inheritance. This was the territory of Ephraim, clan by clan. The boundary of their inheritance went from Atarath Adar in the east to upper Beth Horon and continued to the sea. From Mithmetha on the north, it curved eastward to Tanah Shiloh, passed by it to Genoa on the east. Then it went down from Genoa to Atara and Nera, touched Jericho, and came out at the Jordan. From Tapua, the border went west to the Kana Ravine and ended at the sea. This was the inheritance of the tribe of the Ephraimites, clan by clan. It also included all the towns and their villages that were set aside for the Ephraimites within the inheritance of the Manassites. Joshua, the 17th chapter. This was the allotment for the tribe of Manasseh as Joseph's firstborn. That is for Machir, Manasseh's firstborn. Machir was the ancestor of the Gileadites, who had received Gilead and Bashan because of the Macrites. Macarites were great soldiers. So this allotment was for the rest of the people of Manasseh, the clans of Abiezer, Helek, Azrael, Shishim, Hepha, and Shemida. These are the other male descendants of Manasseh, son of Joseph, by their clans. Now Zelophehad, son of Hepha, the son of Gilead, the son of Machir, the son of Manasseh, had no sons, but only daughters, whose names were Mahla, Noah, Hogla, Milka, Tirza, and Tirza. They went to Eleazar the priest, Joshua son of Nun, and the leaders, and said, The Lord commanded Moses to give us an inheritance among our brothers. So Joshua gave them an inheritance along with the brothers of their father, according to the Lord's command. Manasseh's share consisted of ten tracts of land besides Gilead and Bashan, east of the Jordan, because the daughters of the tribe of Manasseh received an inheritance among the sons. The land of Gilead belonged to the rest of the descendants of Manasseh. The territory of Manasseh extended from Asher to Mikmetha, east of Shishim. The boundary ran southward from there to include the people living at Antapua. Manasseh had the land had the land of Tapua, but Tapua itself on the boundary of Manasseh belonged to the Ephraimites. Then the boundary continued south to the Kana Ravine. These were, belonging, these were towns belonging to Ephraim, lying among the towns of Manasseh. But the boundary of Manasseh was the northern side of the ravine and ended at the sea. On the south of the land belonged to Ephraim, on the north to Manasseh. The territory of Manasseh reached the sea and bordered Asher on the north and Issachar on the east. The people of Joseph said to Joshua, Why have you given us only one allotment and one portion for an inheritance? We are a numerous people and the Lord has blessed us abundantly. If you are so numerous, Joshua answered, and if the hill country of Ephraim is too small for you, Go up into the forest and clear land for yourselves in the land of the Perizzites and Raphites. The people of Joseph replied, The hill country is not enough for us, and all the Canaanites who live in the plain have iron chariots, both those in Bethshan and its settlements, and those in the valley of Jezreel. But Joshua said to the house of Joseph, to Ephraim and Manasseh, You are numerous and very powerful. You will have not only one allotment, but the forested hill country as well. Clear it, and its farthest limits will be yours. Though the Canaanites have iron chariots, and though they are strong, you can drive them out. All right, that is March the 13th reading. Now, I, as I was reading through that, of course, you obviously heard me struggling through a lot of the names of the towns. And, you know, as I was reading, I was thinking about, you know, oh, maybe you should just skip reading the towns so that you are not stumbling through the names. But what's in my heart is that God is identifies everything and everything. He's so specific and clear. And um, he doesn't skip over us, right? And uh, he knows our names. 
And the fact that the time was taken to identify all of the towns is an indication of how important things are to God and how sometimes we overlook things that we shouldn't overlook. We are important to God. Our communities are important to God. If you're here um, in the U.S., we have states. Our states are important to God. All the countries, all the nations of the earth are important, are important to God. He doesn't skip over anybody. And it's important that we recognize that God loves everyone and that he wants his word spread to throughout all the earth and give everybody the opportunity to come back to him and be saved. So I just was thinking how important that is. Now, at the naming of all these towns was the fact that an inheritance was going to the Israelites. And so he's got a specific about what it is we're supposed to receive in a, as our inheritance. He hasn't forgotten you. He hasn't forgotten me. We all have an inheritance that we are supposed to receive. But we got to put ourselves in a position to receive that inheritance. Sometimes it's uh, more challenging to walk into your inheritance than in others. For instance, in the last section we just read, we saw where, I believe it was uh, the sons of Joseph. So we got Manasseh and Ephraim. They were talking about how large they were and how much more land they needed. And the final word was from Joshua. You can get it, but you got to clear it yourself. You got to drive out the inhabitants that are there. You know, God has given all of us we all have an inheritance. And a lot of times we complain about not receiving the inheritance. But many times we're not receiving it is because we don't recognize that we have to go and clear it. We have to go and fight for it. It may require some effort on our part to actually walk into the inheritance. So I just wanted you to see that that we all have something, an inheritance, but we have to go after it. It just doesn't arrive on our doorstep. Last two things I wanted to point out is remember that Caleb and Joshua were the only two uh, members of the Israelite community that left Egypt that were still alive. And because of their obedience, they got a little bit more. They got their own land. <laughs> And I just love the fact of how God specifically pulled them out because of their obedience and their leadership and how he gave them something in addition. They had all of their own land. They weren't included amongst the other Israelites. And then looking at both Joshua and Caleb, their age, right? Um, in Joshua, the 14th chapter, Joshua says, so here I am today, 85 years, 85 years old. I'm still as strong now as I was then. Wow. Referring back to when they left Egypt with Moses. He says, I'm vigorous. He says, I'm as strong now as I was then. He says, I'm still as strong today as the day Moses sent me out. I'm just as vigorous to go out to the battle now as I was then. Look at that. He's just as vigorous. We have to have an expectation of being strong in our bodies. We say that every day in our confession. I'm strong in my body, energized and refreshed. Well, if you're strong in your body, you should act like it. And you also, if you're making that confession of faith, you should take care of your body so that it will be strong. So you can say like Joshua. I'm as strong today as I was back then, 85 years ago. I'm still vigorous to go to battle. Still vigorous enough to go take the land, to go get my inheritance, to go get what belongs to me. And then after that, clear it and make something of it. All right, well, those are my thoughts about the reading today. I hope that you got something out of it. Now say with me our confession. Today is my best day. Today is a perfect day. I decree that today and all the days of my life, 
that I am operating at my best, that I am bearing much fruit, that I am flowing with and following the direction of the Holy Ghost. I am strong in my body, energized and refreshed. I am strong in my soul, alert, vibrant and discerning. I am strong in my spirit, acting in wisdom and revelation. I plan my way and God directs my steps. I maximize my time and resources. I am purpose driven and I bring every project to its prosperous conclusion. My attitude is triumphant. My appearance is impeccable. My manner is cultured. I have a godly heritage. I am from good blood. My victory is apparent to all. For God's word is my constant meditation. And my daily fellowship is with my Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, thank you so much for joining me today. Join me tomorrow for more Wake Up With Joy. And remember to let the word light the way. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Redeemer is your name. Redeemer is your name. I need you to light the way, yeah. I want to be more like you. So clean and pure. Restore and new. Just